to another highly questionable work week. What do you like today, Bomani? What is Terrell Pryor doing to infuriate all these defensive backs? Dale, papi. Was last night more about the Giants being sneaky good or the Cowboys not being as good as we thought? Everybody was terrible last night. Eli Manning was terrible last night. Odell Beckham was terrible last night. Except for this one play right here that ends up deciding the entire game. The Giants end up winning 10-7 because he's really good. And he's really fast. And... The Cowboys are in an interesting situation here, Bomani, because I think we'd all agree that Tony Romo is the better quarterback, but they've decided that they're going with the guy who gave him seven points last night. They're not going with the better quarterback. You know, it's too late now. Like, they've decided the press guy's going to be the guy. He's he thrown for fewer than 200 yards. He's a good quarterback. He's not a great quarterback, and he's still a rookie quarterback. And the Giants treated him like a rookie quarterback, threw a whole bunch of heat at him, and saw if it would confuse him. He looked confused. How should the NFL handle what Harris Douglas did yesterday? Yeah, Harry Douglas, he now plays for the Titans. I did not know this until this whole thing had happened. But here's Harry Douglas. He's coming off the line. He's got Chris Harris across from him. And he does that. Ouch. Football players really don't like that. In fact, many would prefer you go for their heads. And then there's the next play. And, yeah, problems you don't really want. Really want. Defense. Yeah, look, so how, look how many Titans are there to try to break this up. Look how many Broncos think Tlaib's got it all under control by himself. <laughs> all right, now after the game, we have Tlaib and Harry Douglas. They're speaking separately, but Tlaib has made it clear that they will be speaking face-to-face. -face. It was a dirty play by a sorry player. He don't do nothing. He come to the game, don't catch no passes. He come to the game to chop guys from the back, and he got the same agent as me. So when I see his in Atlanta, I'm going to beat his it don't matter how I went. He tried to do something dirty, so that's why I'm going to beat his it's, it's all just football. Everything football to me, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it, was a, it was a run play, and, and me and Chris was, was looking at one another in the face, and I cut block. And it's not like he didn't see me. He was looking right at me. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, they got upset with it, but if they watch film and they watch me play, they know that's what I do. That's if they watch film, though. It wasn't a dirty play. I do feel like it's a fine line here. The guys are always doing things like that, and sometimes it hurts knees and sometimes it doesn't. But the Denver Broncos, and Tlaib specifically, they're not allowed to say that other guys are dirty because the Denver Broncos play on the line and have for a long time, and Tlaib plays right on that line too. I do like the fact, though, he says that the play can't possibly be dirty simply because he does it all the time. Now, the play is legal. Dirty, it does appear to be, though, because that seemed to be wildly unnecessary. Here's the thing about player safety. There's more to your body than just your head. Your knees hurt later, too. I'll show you dirty in Atlanta this offseason, whatever it is that Tlaib decides is how he's going to handle this. That will be dirty, no dispute about it. Was well, that dirtier than this? Good kick. Oh, yeah. Oh! What a horrible sound that was. Here's the thing, though. That hit, illegal, but also not as dirty. Look, man, the punt guys don't know where the ball's go. When you look like you're about to catch it, they hit you. That's how it works. Football, it hurts. Does El Thomas Pina really make Seattle that bad now? Green Bay beats Seattle 38-10. to Do we know how good Seattle is on the road in the cold? I don't think that Earl Thomas makes this big of a difference. I think what happened yesterday is Seattle turned the ball over. Short field, six turnovers. You're never going to do anything other than get blown out if you have six turnovers. Yeah, but we've seen them out there when the offense has let them down before and they did not give up 38 points. It's fair to question whether losing the best player on your defense has an effect. But at the same time, that offense is just bad. Russell Wilson looked bad. Then he had one of the picks that wasn't his fault. The thing is, it's one of the picks, and it was a whole bunch of them. We're going to see how this goes, but the ultimate question with this team, even if everything was rolling right, was going to be this. How do they play on the road in the playoffs? Because in this stretch they've had where they've been dominant, they won two games on the road in the playoffs. One, Robert Griffin's knee exploded. The other, Blair Walsh forgot how to do his job. Do dangerous to much stuff from Ryan Tannehill mean their teams are hosts? Hey, would you like to see some guys get injured? Here we go. Which quarterback do we have up first here getting injured? This will be Ryan Tannehill. 
He has sprained two knee ligaments, including his ACL. They're saying it's not a tear, but a sprain is a tear by definition, so I guess they're just saying it isn't torn that badly. Here's Matt Stafford, MVP candidate. Ah, yeah, you might have seen he kind of reached at his hand at the end. He's got, like, dislocations and torn ligaments, and that's his throwing hand, and that's a bad thing. Now, for the Lions, this is big, of course, but he's tough as hell, right? So if he can throw the ball, he will. I just don't know if he can. For the Dolphins, Miami fans, this is what you say you wanted. Here it is. No, no, they don't want Matt Moore. That is not what they yeah, want. They say they, they want another quarterback. That's the other one. No, they don't want that one. They want, they want like Tony Romo is what they end up wanting. Detroit's a little bit of a fraud here, okay? All nine of their victories by a combined 45 points. Green Bay has won the last three games by more points than that. Detroit's not for real. You can't afford to lose either one of these guys, but you're not going anywhere with them either. Are you kidding me? This is a matchup made in heavens for the Super Bowl. You know, Dan Orlowski and Matt Moore. Are you kidding me? That's what the okay. fans have been waiting there for. You you know, this is it. This is what the Fidel right, Godel is right. looking for. You know, hell of a Super Bowl. Is Orlovsky still on the line? Yes, he yes. Is. The guy who can, ran out of the back of the end zone. Can you imagine how furious Vince Young has to be hearing this? Orlovsky's still in the league, huh? Still in the league. Wow. It's been eight years since he was on a team that went winless. One play I remember from his entire career, and it's he doesn't know how big the end zone is. Does Tara Pryor deserve all the hair he gets from defensive backs? This is amazing sound we're about to show you. Pac-Man Jones was asked about Terrell Pryor after the game, continued to go on and on and on, and the reporter tried to move him off of the subject. He would not be moved off the subject. One catch, three yards for Terrell Pryor. Look at this. Garbage. What did that start with right there, Terrell? Garbage. There you go, right there, bro. Oh, there you go. Get him out of there. Right you see there, him in there? Bro. Oh, okay. right there. You better find him somebody to play with. Is it him saying basically he could garbage? Garbage. All right, Adam. Aside from Terrell, how big is it for you? Guys? Garbage. I ain't talking about nothing else. I'm happy we won. All right, cool. Terrell Pride, garbage. All right, guys. That's kind of amazing. I wish more post-game sound was like that. I feel bad. Terrell Pryor is a man. He's a beast. He's a really good wide receiver, afflicted by all the Brown syndrome of not having a quarterback. I'd love to see that guy with a quarterback. I don't think Adam Jones would be able to talk about him that way if he had one. I don't know, though. This is the second week in a row, though, the defensive back has been tired of Terrell Pryor. They feel like he talks a little too much. Pac-Man took it another step further and said he was tired of seeing the way that Pryor was talking to Robert Griffin, that Robert Griffin shouldn't tolerate somebody talking to him like that. What's crazy about this though all these guys have beef with the prior after the game prior is captain let's talk about something else what are you doing bruh what are you doing you're not beginning to think that the browns are not going to win a game this year <laughs> i got that funny feeling now you know it's getting close to the to the end of the line here rg3 was terrible yesterday and we thought really he bad. was their best chance to win a game he is their best chance Coming up next on Highly Questionable. Is this the guy you voted for, Poppy? Is this is the guy? This I can is, tell. I can disclose my vote. No, you're allowed, you're allowed to do that now. Okay, never mind. Monday, time for more football. Why isn't the NFL investigating the Steelers inflating footballs? This is what we have from last week's game against the Giants. It's supposed to be 12.5 PSI. It was instead the football was about 11.8. I hate that I know these things. I hate that months and months of coverage make me care about PSI. But the reason this isn't a story is because the Giants complained but didn't file official charges. And the NFL spokesman has said they went through the proper protocol. Maybe the balls were just underinflated because of the weather. Well, that's the one thing, though. Once the NFL said they were going to do all these things or protocol, they could then lean on protocol when they decided, man, we don't want to do this. We shouldn't have done it the last time. Now y'all going to be asking us once a year to look at some footballs, and we ain't trying to look at no footballs. Why aren't they investigating it? Is that what you want? Like, do you want this again? Because I don't want this. Well, we do know one person who wants it, right, Poppy? One person oh, wants that's it. Right, that's right. He's, he's making phone calls as, as of now. <laughs> Ted Wells and his associates. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. They had to trust yes, on this issue. Yes. <laughs> Stan Wells got him another high school chemistry book, ready to rock. <laughs> Come on, he's showing up at uh, league offices with a chemistry beaker. Come on, hire me, $5 million. 
How worried should Louisville fans be about Lamar Jackson hanging out with Johnny Football after the Heisman ceremony? Is this the guy you voted for, Poppy? Is this is the guy? Is I can't tell. I can disclose my vote. No, you're allowed. You're allowed to do that now. Okay, never mind. He wants to keep it secret. Still, let's let's check out some video. That's so unnecessary. Anyone else thought that Mansell showed up for that? That way. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not the guy you want to be hanging out with, is it? Or maybe it is. I mean, who? Hey, like you can make the argument, who better to hang out with? Like, fantastic, by the way, for Lamar Jackson that he's not in that photograph. But the thing with Johnny Manziel, there's nothing more embarrassing for him than the fact that he's available to show up at the <laughs> ceremony. I mean, he's the youngest dude there by far. Who else was there for him to hang out with but Lamar Jackson? What are you going to do, go kick it with Johnny Rogers? But you know that Johnny Football was coming back. That's the first step to come back. He shows, shows up at the Heisman. Next thing you know, he's going to show up with one of the teams in the NFL. I'm telling you, he's going to be something else now. Actually, he did show up in the parking lot of an NFL stadium playing catch on Sunday. I'm not making that up. Easy Florida Atlantic head coach spot really a step up for Lane Kiffin. This is really odd. When Lane Kiffin was failing, he kept seeming to get better jobs than he deserved. You figure, given the job he did at <laughs> Alabama, that he should be up for one of these Donald Trump cabinet positions, right? And wrong. University of Houston said they didn't want him. Now he's taking the job at Florida Atlantic. And quite honestly, this is all he can do to try to get a head coaching job. It has been clearly demonstrated the big boys don't want him until he proves that he won't embarrass them. Gus Malzahn, before he got the Auburn job, had to go to Arkansas State because people didn't believe this is the fastest track to him to get back to where he wants to be. How tired is Lane Kiffin of being yelled at by Nick Saban? Because that job was paying $1.4 million dollars a year to be the offensive coordinator standing next to that guy and I assure you Lane Kiffin is not being paid 1.4 million dollars a year to head coach the FAU Owls but he went from FU right there to FAU by the way I totally try to get out of this like Lane Kiffin is a grown man he's somebody's father and this dude's <laughs> screaming at him like that in front of a mayor <laughs> that's what happened me so mine and I'm mighty possessive Lil Wayne could not have found him a better successor. Every shot you see them take at me, they all contested. Allen Iverson should deal this <laughs> all in question. Last night I went to sleep wanting more, tried to decide what direction I should go towards. Some nights I wish I could go back in life, not to change, <laughs> just to feel a couple things twice. Highly questionable is broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that has a long, 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 long list of ex-lovers. Do you question? You give us topics and events, and we question. Do you question this play call? All right, it's Browns Bengals. The Browns are backed up to their goal line because, of course, they are. <laughs> In Cleveland for the 87th Battle of Ohio. Ooh, let's go. Third time today, the Browns are starting. Oh, yeah. 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 That's bleeping football right there. That's Browns football, baby. Flea flicker from your own end zone thrown into triple coverage. Yes. That pass was not good. It was an even worse idea. Like, yeah. that, like, I can't find a single positive thing to say about anybody on that play. Not even the team that intercepted it. Because if they hadn't, I'd have been like, what's wrong with you? How were the Bengals ready for that? You can't expect the Browns to do that from their own end zone. Not only were they ready for it, three guys were ready for it. That wasn't even the worst play of the first half. Watch these. First no, there was the worst for one. Three today. He's one for four for seven yards. The 25 yard line with two oh. to go in the first. Play. What is that? Oh. What is that thing? Is that a dwarf? Yeah, it's, it's one of the mascots. I've never really understood what the point was of having that elf, but they do. Brownie the elf is their mascot? I'm just learning that. Wait, that's actually his name? Brownie the elf is as clumsy as all their players. That wasn't even the best mascot video we have from yesterday. Do you guys have that mascot that was sexually gyrating for the Colts on Lamar Miller's touchdown? Put him up there. Yeah. Dance, blue man. Dance. Do you question if this was surprising? Duke UNLV. Man, you remember that? That was a lot of fun 20 years ago. Larry Johnson, Stacey Ogman. That's not what we have for you now. We've got Grayson Allen doing something. He has his pass intercepted, and here comes Duke one more time. Allen on the Ooh. Oh, he looks quick. 
He looks like he's healthy. Equals W. So, uh, who's surprised? Are you surprised? <laughs> I did not know that he had that in him, even though I've seen him have that in him I mean, a couple of I mean, seasons he's now. One of the best players yes. in America. I yes. I understand. I'm still surprised by that. Am I allowed to be surprised by that? Wasn't he in the dunk contest at the McDonald's yes, game? Yes, he's very just good at jumping. Curious. I'm this still surprised by it. I'm yep. just, I just want to know why. What's yes. the reason? It why is that? Me. Why is it that I'm still surprised by that? You, you're the one who can why? answer that. Excellent question. Let's move on to the next one. That's because he's white. That's okay, why. there it he's is. There it is. There it is. Okay, moving on. Do you question if this would make Beast Mode proud? I miss Marshawn Lynch. Let's go out to high school, Pennsylvania. See what we've got here. See if we've got some guy breaking tackles. A backup running back here. Niger West. This is two-way. Oh. Oh, somebody. Oh, somebody make a wow. hit. Wow. That's pretty good right there. I just want to take this moment to say Pennsylvania high school football looks whack, <laughs> right? Like I feel like this dude would have died trying this in Texas. <laughs> That's not great tackling by number nine there. Number nine seems to be a little uh, skittish. Number 14 doesn't look so great at it either. Yeah. I feel so bad because most high schoolers have no business being on television, right? Like it's one kid beasting and the other one's just being high school kids. And what are we doing? <laughs> Ridiculing the high school kids. <laughs> I tell you one thing, the head coach of the Hawaii team should get fired if he doesn't at least a defensive coordinator. You know how many tackles are they going to okay. miss in a run like that, you know? Get rid of them, the two okay, of them. There we go. So we weren't satisfied just ripping the kids. Now we're firing people, too. <laughs> we just put a shop teacher out of work. I mean, why didn't we just celebrate the kids' run? Why do we fire and kill everybody on the other team? Why do we do that? <laughs> Time to play the game that has separation anxieties. See? Oh, no. Tell us what to watch on television tonight. We'll tell you if we're intrigued or not. He never hugs me like that. Feel so Please warm. don't leave me. I never will. On Root Sports Southwest, Nets and Rockets. I mean, not really, but the Rockets are kind of fun to watch, right? They score a lot. The other day they beat OKC. Patrick Beverly was great at the end of the game playing defense. He does that very well. And so he's excited. And oh, coach, you are not ready for my intense defense. What happened to D'Antoni there? That's a flop. That's also some fossilized bone movement working there. Uh, Bomani, are you intrigued? Hey, what happened to D'Antoni's mustache? Like, this feels like it's an entirely different person. Like, was he in witness protection or yes, something? Yes, yes. He wants to take all of that Knicks and Lakers off him. So he just shaved the hair on his face. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Everybody's now talking about the Rockets. You know, they're not paying any attention to the Nets. But I'm telling you something, you know, the Nets are going to have a hell of a game. They're going to be the out of the Rockets, you know, Linsanity is going to have a, a hell of a game, and that Latino player, Brooke Lopez, Brooke Lopez is going to have a hell of a play, he's going to have hell, a hell of a game, he's going to have a triple-double, you know? And it's awkward when he does that Latino player, Brooke Lopez, because Brooke Lopez is actually good, and when he does it with the other dudes, we've never heard of him. Like, he just made Brooke Lopez into Marcelo Huerta. On ESPN, Monday Night Football, Ravens and Patriots. Okay, I'll take part in some of this here, but first we're going to, I thought the best impersonator I'd seen was the Andy Reid impersonator in Kansas City, but is this one better with the Patriots, Matt Patricia, their defensive coordinator, has got an impersonator. We've got to get to it, because that is, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's unreal, look at this. That's really good, the backward cap, the beard, that is just awesome, that is just awesome. And if you keep flip-flopping yeah, back and forth like that, you're going to confuse me, because they look the same to me. Uh, Bomani, are you intrigued? Are we even sure that's an impersonation, or is it that Matt Patricia is the most regular looking dude associated with the NFL. <laughs> Papi, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. You know, Billy Sheet is going to have his hands full. No Gronkowski, you know, Jose Flago is going to have a hell of a game against Brady. I'm telling you, the Ravens are for real. You know, I'm telling you something. I'm expecting a major upset. You know, the Ravens are for real. So, Jose Flago, you know, he's going to be the man of the hour. My father just repeated everything. He said, I'm telling you something twice. He said, Jose Flacco twice. He said, how about the fact that for whatever reason, he's claimed Joe Flacco? I know, right? Jose Flacco. Like of all the people that just pick up on the waiver wire, how do you get Joe Flacco? <laughs> well, Flacco is Spanish, Yeah, man. Flacco is skinny. Yeah, that's right. That's yes. right. He doesn't want to be known as Jose, but he's Jose Flacco. No yes. matter how he wants to, yes. to, oh, okay. to do, he's Jose Flacco. Okay, he's outing Joe Flacco. Yes. 
That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. That's not the best impersonator I have seen. This is the best I have seen. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> really? Right. That does look so much like me. It does. It's He's the beard. That, 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 that frowdish expression, I yes. think, is the part that really clenches the, it. I, no, what clenches it is food. In front of food.